Uh, uh, I'd love to give you an amen, Pastor, but I can't hear your sound. Hey everyone, Digital Pastor here. Thanks so much for joining me for part three of four on getting your church up in live streaming. If you missed part one and two of this series, click on the links up here to catch up right now. Also, please help support this channel by giving this video a big thumbs up, subscribing, leaving a comment, and making sure that notifications are turned on so you can be notified every time that we upload new videos. All right. Here we are. You've got your incredible camera picked out, your capture card and sweet computer set up. So now it's time to get your audio sounding beautiful and captured into your computer. In this video, we're focused on the third step in the streaming process, which is many times one of the most frustrating, at least for me. I've included links in the description for recommended hardware and software for various audio capture and mixing scenarios. So check that out below. Audio capture is the way that you take all of that audio that's going on inside of your church service, like all of the incredible music, the powerful speaking, the ambient sound of your room, and pipe it into your live stream so all of the people watching feel like they're right there with you. Bad audio is the number one killer of your church's live stream, in my opinion. I would much rather have low resolution and pixelated video and fantastic audio than great video and terrible audio. The problem is that achieving that great audio, especially with limited volunteers and equipment, can be a challenge. Some common problems on live streaming audio are volume levels that are either super quiet, with the Jews. crazy loud and distorted, poorly mixed, Everybody give it up for Jesus. buzzing, what God wants you to do in your mind, in your heart, in your, in your gut poorly EQ'd, flat and dead sounding, and out of sync with your video. In this video, we're focusing on the two main areas of your church's live streaming audio, which are mixing and mastering your audio and actually capturing your audio into the computer. Number one is capturing your audio. Whether you have an audio mixer in your sanctuary or auditorium, or you are live streaming from your home with a single microphone, the fundamentals of audio capture are the same. The analog signal from your mixer or microphone needs to be converted into a digital signal. This is going to happen through a process typically referred to as A to D or analog to digital conversion. This process happens through hardware that contains an analog to digital converter. The hardware takes the analog signal and converts it to ones and zeros that the computer can read. This process of converting the signal from analog to digital is extremely important. The quality of this conversion can be the difference between this. Hi, this is the test of the microphone and this. Hi, this is the test of the microphone. Audio is not an area to skimp on when it comes to quality. Now there are a handful of ways to accomplish this conversion. Some ways sound awesome, and some sound just absolutely terrible. The type of mixer you have will also determine the best way to capture your audio. A traditional analog mixer has an ideal capture method and a digital mixer has a different ideal method. There are four main methods to capturing your audio. Computer motherboard line in, camera line slash mic input, audio interface, and network audio. Number one is computer mic slash line input. Almost all computers have an eighth inch line input on the motherboard of the computer. The line input is normally colored blue. You can connect a mixer's XLR, quarter inch, or RCA plugs to your motherboard's line input with cables like these. Now don't plug your mixer into the red microphone port as your mixer's level is a line level signal and needs to be plugged into the blue line level input. I do not recommend using these connections on the motherboard unless you have absolutely no other choice. The reason is that the quality of these inputs is low and many times they have a lot of noise added to your audio when this conversion from analog to digital happens. This was recorded with the Zoom H1 microphone coming out of the microphone's line output into my motherboard's line input. Hi, this is the test of the microphone. This was recorded with the same microphone, but recorded via the USB port of the same microphone into Ableton Live. Hi, this is the test of the microphone. That's all the time I'll spend on this because these should never be used unless it's an emergency. Number two is the camera line slash mic input. Many cameras have one or more physical audio inputs. These inputs are typically either an eighth inch or XLR port. This will convert the audio into digital and most of the time will embed the audio along with the video out of the camera's HDMI or SDI output. 
Your computer can then capture your audio along with the video when it is fed into your video capture device. My experience has been that cameras with eighth inch audio inputs will not result in great audio quality. The analog to digital converters typically are lower quality, resulting in lower quality audio with potentially more noise. Cameras with XLR inputs typically have better quality audio conversion. The quality can still be hit and miss even if the camera has XLR inputs. In general, I don't recommend feeding your audio through your camera's audio input. Number three is audio interface. An audio interface is an external, and sometimes internal, hardware device that typically connects to your computer using USB, Firewire, Thunderbolt, or PCIe if it's an internal card. The input connections on audio interfaces are normally XLR and quarter inch, but will vary between interfaces. These devices, for the most part, have much higher quality analog to digital converters. This results in cleaner and higher quality audio. Most of the time, audio interfaces have some sort of headphone jack or other outputs to allow you to monitor your signal. Most churches will be taking either an XLR or quarter inch feed from your mixer and plugging it into your audio interface. Be sure that the USB connection speed on your computer is fast enough for your audio interface. Most interfaces require at least USB 2, but some higher end interfaces require USB 3 or higher. My inexpensive go-to audio interface is the Behringer UMC 202 HD. Just plug in your XLR or quarter inch feed from your mixer, plug in the USB cable and install the drivers and you are set. Simply add the audio device in your streaming software and you are done. You can pick up that audio interface on Amazon through the link in the description. At this point, I'm going to shift my focus from capturing audio from analog mixers to capturing audio from digital mixers. If you have an analog mixer, I still have more for you later in this video, so don't click away just yet. If you have a digital mixer, oftentimes they will be actual audio interfaces in and of themselves. For example, the Behringer X32 is not only a digital mixer, but it's also a giant USB audio interface right out of the box. You can connect the X32 directly to your streaming computer via USB and send up to 32 channels of audio in and out, although most churches will just send two channels. The more popular digital mixers that are also USB or Firewire interfaces would include Behringer X32 mixers, Midas M32 mixers, and the Presonus Studio Live mixers. Most digital mixers will also include one or more of the following digital output connections, like ADAT, SPDIF, AES-EBU, AES-50, MADI, or Dante, which I will cover later in this video. These expansion cards, along with other network expansion cards, can give you greater flexibility when mixing your live streaming audio. My strong suggestion is to use the USB or Firewire or one of the digital outputs or digital expansion cards from your mixer if you have them. The first reason is the conversion between analog and digital. When a digital mixer brings in an analog signal, it converts it to a digital signal in order to digitally mix, route, and apply things like EQ, compression, and effects. When all of that is done, your mixer converts that digital signal back into an analog signal to send out of your mixer's physical outputs. When you take that signal out from your digital mixer, it has been converted from analog to digital and back to analog again. If you take that analog signal and plug it into an audio interface, that audio interface will convert it again from analog to digital to be captured into the computer. Every time you convert an audio signal from analog to digital and back to analog, you are going to lose some quality when the conversion process happens. The loss might be minuscule, but it is still there. Think of it like making a photocopy of a photocopy. The more times you copy the copy, the more there is a potential of losing some quality. The more inexpensive the hardware you are using, the more noticeable the loss of quality will be after that conversion. If you have a digital output on your mixer, I always recommend using it for your audio capture for live stream. The second reason is because of potential noise in your analog signal. Whenever you capture an analog signal from your mixer into an audio interface, there is always a possibility of noise being introduced into the signal. This noise can come from grounding issues, dirty power, and the quality of the analog to digital converters in your interface. If you use a digital output from your mixer, any chance of noise being added to your signal is gone. The digital signal is simply ones and zeros being transmitted into your computer. Your audio signal will be much cleaner. Okay, back to audio interfaces. If you have a digital mixer, the best option for most users will be to plug your mixer right into your streaming computer via USB or Firewire, assuming your mixer has that feature. 
If you have a digital mixer that doesn't have a USB or Firewire connection, this last option may be best for you. Number four is network audio. Network audio has been growing very popular as a means of routing and capturing audio over your network. There are a handful of network audio protocols, but for the sake of this video and for practicality, I'm focusing on Dante. All you need to know is that Dante is awesome. Dante is a way to take audio and make that audio available anywhere on your network where you have another Dante enabled device. On your Windows Windows PC, you can install the Dante virtual sound card and controller software. This creates a virtual audio input on your computer that allows you to receive any Dante audio channels that are on your network that you're connected to. For example, there is an expansion card for the Behringer X32 and Midas M32 that makes the 32 channels of audio from your mixer available anywhere on your network. Once you plug in this card into your mixer and into your network, you can send any audio, whether that is individual channels or simply a two-channel mix, directly to your streaming computer. All you have to do is install the Dante virtual sound card and controller software on your streaming computer. In the controller software, you will see available inputs and outputs on your Dante network. You can route whatever channels you want into your Dante virtual sound card. After you have routed your desired audio, you can add the Dante virtual sound card into vMix or whatever your streaming software is as an audio input. The audio from your mixer is now piped right into your streaming software over the network. Audinate, which is the company that created Dante, also makes a very inexpensive yet powerful line of adapters called Dante Avio adapters. These two adapters can take either a stereo analog XLR output from your mixer or a digital AES EBU connection via XLR like the one on the X32 and convert it to Dante. Simply plug it into an analog XLR or AES EBU XLR connection, and then plug it into a power over ethernet enabled switch, and your audio is now available anywhere on your network. The fantastic thing about these adapters is that they only run for about $150. For instance, our church campus in Spokane has a media booth that is in a different room than the sound booth in the sanctuary. We send our audio to our streaming computer via a Dante Avio adapter coming out of the AES EBU port on the X32. It is extremely convenient. Just make sure that both places are connected to your church's network and you are in business. Links for the Dante Avio adapters as well as the Dante card for the X32 and M32 are in the description below. That's it for audio capture. Now let's move on to mixing your audio for live stream. Number two is mixing live stream audio. The first way to mix your live stream audio is the main mix. The first and quickest way to mix your live streaming audio is to simply capture your main left and right signal coming out of your mixer. This might be XLR or quarter inch right into your audio interface. The benefit of using the main mix from your board is that you know that what you are hearing go through the speakers is going to be in the ballpark of what's going on in your streaming audio. With some of the other ways you can mix your live stream, sound on live stream could potentially sound very different. We've had some instances in the past with our own church streaming where some audio channels were barely coming through at all or were almost totally muted. Using the main mix can be a set it and forget it option. However, the drawback of doing this is that if your main mix is not very good, your live stream is not going to sound good good either. Many times what sounds good in your sanctuary does not translate well to live stream. You might have to take the piano and some vocals and have them turned up really high to make it sound good in your sanctuary. Then when you listen to that mix online, the vocals and piano are blaring loud and you can hardly hear the drums. We've all heard those mixes that sound awful and are all over the place and dead and lifeless and flat. I don't typically recommend using the main left and right mix because these main mixes typically don't translate very well to live stream. If you have an incredible audio engineer with amazing mixes, this might be a good option. If you have no other option, you can always do the main left and right mix, but if you have the ability, I would do one of the other mixing options I'll talk about in a moment. Number two is the post fader aux mix. Another way to mix your live stream audio is using a post fader aux mix out of your mixer. A post fade aux mix is when the level going to your live stream is connected to the physical faders of the channels. For example, if you turn up the snare microphone in the mains, it will turn it up in your aux mix. If you set the levels of all of your channels the same going to your aux mix, it will be the exact same mix as your main mix. What this allows you to do is to make adjustments based on how your main mix responds to your room. For example, if all of your channels are set at the same level going to your aux, translates to a live stream mix that has the piano too loud, you could set the piano 3 dB lower than all of the other channels in that live stream aux mix. The piano will still turn up and down to the live stream when you move the fader up and down, but making that tweak will have the piano starting 3 dB lower to begin with to compensate for the piano being too loud in the aux mix. This type of mixing can be beneficial when you don't have any additional people to mix your live stream. 
Number three is the pre-fader aux mix with dedicated mixing person. If you have the volunteers or staff, this method employs a dedicated person mixing an aux mix on your mixer. This is really only practical with a digital mixer. The reason is the secondary mixing person needs to be able to actively control the mixer to mix a separate feed going to your live stream. Monitoring could be done via a headphone output on the mixer or through the computer that is capturing the audio for live stream. Mixing the second mix could be achieved through an iPad app, computer software, or external control surface like the Behringer X-Touch. The X-Touch, for example, can control different mixes on your X32 over your network, via USB, or over MIDI. Your main front of house mixer will be mixing the sanctuary feed directly from your mixer as a secondary mixing person is mixing a pre-fader aux feed for live stream. With a pre-fader aux mix, your live stream audio will not be affected by changing of levels by your front of house person. However, typically any changes made to compression, EQ, and gate will affect your live stream. This is also true of mixing options one and two. A pre-fader aux mix can be a great and simple option for a church that has the staffing to have somebody dedicated to mixing the live stream feed. Number four is a separate mixer mix. Some digital mixers like the Behringer X32 have the ability to share all of the channels of that mixer with another mixer. For example, you can plug in one X32 to another X32 via the two AES50 ports on the back of each mixer. This gives the second X32 a copy of all of the channels independent of the first mixer. Regardless of how the first mixer EQs and compresses and processes each channel, the second mixer essentially has a blank slate to mix however they want. This is a great option if you have the budget for a physical second mixer. The benefit of running a setup like two linked Behringer X32s is that you could mix the second X32 in a totally different room or location in your building. This room could be dedicated to mixing your live streaming audio and could be sound treated and set up however you want. Simply run your network cables between the two mixers and configure them to connect. That brings us to our last option in this video. Lastly is Live DAW Mixing. Live DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, mixing is similar to the previous method. However, instead of mixing on a second mixer, you would be mixing within a software program like Pro Tools. The advantage of this method is the power and versatility of software mixing. There are very high quality audio plugins made by companies like Waves, Slate Digital, Universal Audio, Isotope, and more. Live DAW mixing can be achieved in a few ways, but I will only focus on one. That method is called Dante. Dante allows you to bring in all of your channels over the network into Pro Tools and then mix, EQ, compress, run effects, and do everything that you want to with your audio. With the Behringer X32, this is achieved by installing the Dante expansion card and routing all of your audio into different channels inside of Pro Tools. From here, you essentially have two options. You can record all of your channels live, or you can simply record enable your tracks. When you record all of your channels, you are capturing the raw audio individually, as all of your plugins are then processing your audio as you mix. When you record enable your tracks, the same thing happens except none of the audio is recorded. Audio is simply passed through all of the plugins as you mix. Inside of Pro Tools, all of your audio will be sent to your master bus, which is like your mains on a mixer. This is where even more magic happens. One of my pet peeves is live streaming audio that is quiet. Loud, mix and mastered audio is crucial for your live stream. The master bus is where you can apply a handful of audio plugins that can really glue your mix together and give you a great level of sound going out to your live stream. A few of my go-to audio plugins for the master bus are the SSL G Master Bus Compressor, Max Volume, and the L3 LL Ultra Maximizer. If you want a great sounding template for live streaming audio in Pro Tools, you can pick up Bethel's template for their Pro Tools session for live streaming. It's $500 for the Pro Tools session and is the actual template used for songs like these live versions of Reckless Love, Peace, and others. If you don't have the plugins used in this template, you'll need to purchase those as well. Those plugins run about $1,000 depending if those plugins are on sale or not. They are definitely well worth it. That's it for the audio overview for live streaming. As you continue to hone in and tweak your live streaming audio, just understand that it's a process and takes time to perfect and get closer to how you want it to sound. Don't be discouraged and keep working to make it better. You might have questions and need help figuring some of these things out, so leave your comments and questions below and I'll respond with some help. As always, I've included lots of links to the hardware and software in the description below. If you purchase any of this equipment or software, please use the links in the description as it helps support this channel's continued content. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. I appreciate all of your support and encouragement and am blessed to hear the testimonies of your live streaming growing and increasing in excellence as you preach the gospel through this awesome means of technology. God bless you, and we'll see you in the final video of the series, Producing and Streaming Your Services Live.